Good morning and happy Sabbath. This is Courtney and I'm here to teach Junior Sabbath School today. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've done a Junior Sabbath School. Things have been a little crazy. I'm sure you all know from school and parents church, you know things are just never normal these days. So I appreciate your patience and I'm excited to be here with you today to talk about Elijah and Elisha. So I'm going to be looking at the PowerPoints lesson today to jump off of and we'll see um, how on track we stay. Um, our power text this week is, I lost it. Okay, it's from Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of all the earth. To the ends of all the earth. I love that. God's Spirit gives us this power. He gives us the power to live and work for Him. Our world right now says, it's all about you, live for you, make yourself happy. We're to be living for God. It's a little bit of a different message, but Jesus says, live for him. The apostles say, live for him. All of the Old Testament, it's in the commandments, serving God. That is our number one responsibility. So we're going to read a little bit in 2 Kings chapter 2. So I'd love for you to go to 2 Kings chapter 2 with me. <clears throat> the Lord, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on the way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. I love how Elisha is such a dedicated friend. He says, um, I'm sorry, I'm going with you. Do you have a best friend in your life that if they told you not to follow them somewhere, you'd be like, excuse me, I'm going with you. I know I've got friends like that. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. Well, what do you think Elisha did? Did he say, Okay, enjoy your trip? No. Stay here. He says, Stay here. And Elisha says, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, said Elisha, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will what? Not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Does this sound familiar? This makes me think of Moses and the Red Sea. So interesting. Taking his coat, slapping it on the water. And there it goes, dry land they've got. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha said. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly... Do you know what happens next? A chariot of fire. A chariot of fire um, comes out. It appears with the horses of fire appearing and then separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. 
Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. He's devastated. This whole time he knows this is going to happen. He knows all these people, Jericho and Jordan, they ask him, do you know your master's being taken from you? And he says, yes, I know this. He knows what's happening, but he still tears his cloak. He's devastated. Um, Elijah then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Do you know what happens here? Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, we are your servants. Have, we have 50 able men. Let them go and look for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has picked him up and set him down on some mountain or some valley. No, Elisha replied, do not send them. But they persisted until he was too embarrassed to refuse. So he said, send them. And they sent 50 men who searched for three days. But what? They didn't find him. When they returned to Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, he said to them, didn't I tell you not to go? <laughs> didn't I tell you not to go? All right. So that's all we're going to read in Second Kings right now. So how... What? This must have been such an, a crazy um, experience from Elisha. Um, it, it just has to be a crazy, crazy experience. And, you know, are we um, modeling others that have a spirit-filled life? Is there someone in your life that is a role model to you? Maybe a pastor, maybe a parent or family member, maybe a friend, um, church member that you know, someone that has an extraordinary spiritual life or has dedicated themselves so fully to God, um, like Elijah and, and say you're Elisha, in what ways can you model that person? What ways can you model that person? Um, you know, God has some amazing victories. Those chariots of fire, how unreal is that? I want to read with you Psalm 68, 17. It says here, the chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary, into his sanctuary. So what was the chariot that came for Elijah? What was that? If we look here, we see the Lord has come into his sanctuary. It's incredible, isn't it? All right, I want to move down here and looking at these questions. Okay, so have you ever been handed down a family heirloom? Um, if, if not, you know, you could ask family members of what they have and ask them how that made them feel. And how do you feel having received an heirloom? It's special. It's something that kind of captivates the, the spirit, not like the, you know, spirits like supernatural, but just the, the personality and the memories. And it holds these things so dear. And I'm sure that that's like what the cloak was for Elisha. Not only did it give him confidence to embrace the power that Elijah had given to him, that God had given to him, but it also must have been a comfort to him that he still kind of had a piece of Elijah with him. And that's, um, I feel like heirlooms can really do that for us too. As long as we are not dependent on them, and we're not storing them up as treasures that our focus is on because they're treasures in heaven, right? So we want to make sure we don't become overly attached to family heirlooms, but they are wonderful symbols of family and memories that we might have. Um, so how did God's spirit give those people the power to live and work for him? So we're actually, um, this is referencing a verse in Acts, Acts 2, 2 through 11. It reads, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. 
All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So this is saying they spoke in other languages that they might not have already known. So that's like if I were to start speaking French to people when I don't know French at all. Um, now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us hears him in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, <laughs> residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Ph other places, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome. Sorry, guys, I am terrible with these biblical pronunciations. It doesn't matter how many times that I, that I look these up. I can never remember how to pronounce these names. Both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. So how did God's spirit move in those people? He gave them the ability to communicate to others that they may not have previously been able to communicate with. So ask an adult about a time that God's spirit gave them power and maybe emboldened them to share the love of God with someone they may not have otherwise approached about it. So what was the evidence of the Holy Spirit's power? Here we see again the languages, the fire. Ask the adult you're talking to, what kinds of evidence did they have of God's spirit? So I want you to spend more time talking with family and parents especially um, about kind of what this all means to you and what experiences they have had with the Spirit. Um, it's so cool how God expresses himself a lot in the Bible through fire. What a powerful element in our world. So it's so important for us to ask God for these opportunities to reach out to others in his powerful message of grace and love. So friends, I hope that you enjoyed learning about this today. I love the story of Elisha and Elijah. I would encourage you to read more about them and their friendship and always just focus on God and um, just think about him, pray about it, read the Bible, ask your family and friends about their observations into it. Um, you can never stop learning. We never, ever stop learning. So friends, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sabbath. Bye.